Join UF Hall of Famer and 14-year NFL vet Shane Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning. It's a live edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It is Thursday. That means we'll have Brent Beard, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter. And then we'll have uh, Mike Rat out, talk about high school sports. Middle of bat- they're probably much, pretty much in the middle of baseball and softball season, I believe. Uh, if you missed it, Riley Kugel is in the transfer portal. No surprise at all. Uh, wish him the best. Uh, I just don't see uh, I didn't see him playing here very much anyway. Um, so good for him. Let him go somewhere else. Maybe he'll excel there or not. I just think he's got to improve in a lot of areas in this game. Athleticism only gets you so far, as I've stated many times. If you play college basketball, you're a damn good athlete. Um, also, uh, Major League Baseball opening day is today. Some games have already been rained out, but should be a lot on TV to watch. Before we get to Brown, the Titan MR text line, uh, this is from our 941 area code. It says, Sully does care about losses. Here's Sully's quote after the last night's game. I've seen about enough. Changes looming for Gators after midweek loss to Seminoles. Change practice schedule too. Uh, I can promise you this. I do not. He may have changed practice schedule. He is not going to change anything about his rotation or lineups for the weekend. Maybe he's cha- making changes for midweek. Uh, yeah, Sully wants to win. Nobody, nobody signs up to lose, but Sully will tell you too that the weekend games mean a thousand times more than a midweek game. Let's go to the Titan MR hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp, and we're joined by Brent Beer. Good morning, Brent. How you doing? Shane, uh, good morning. Happy Easter to all. This front's moving through this morning, so it, it will be cooler tomorrow. And later today, which would be nice, but we are in the middle of spring practice for football. And also uh, the Sweet 16 resumes tonight. So uh, just just a wonderful time of year in many ways. It is. And, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, tonight and tomorrow night, the Sweet 16 games uh, crank up. And I, I, I just do not understand uh, the scheduling of these games. Brent, because if you look at it, uh, the first two games are at 7.09 and 7.39. Yeah. And right. then you got Illinois and Iowa State tipping off at 10.09. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. tomorrow night, Tennessee and Creighton tee, tee off, uh, tip off at 10.09. It just makes no sense to me. Why, why no. not start the games earlier? But whatever. Well, I, I agree. Uh, and look, the same thing happened uh, on Sunday. You, you had uh, – uh, like two afternoon games, and the rest of the games were at night. Uh, I mean, the uh, in the Alabama North Carolina's game is going to be about the same way. You won't. They think it'll start at nine forty, but it may be closer to ten. Yep. Yeah, it'll be uh be late for sure. All right, Brent. Let's uh, let's talk a little college football. Uh, in your notes here, you, somebody's come out with the best walk-ons in college football <laughs> history. Yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Stenson Bennett's number one, Baker Mayfield, Hunter Renfro, J.J. Watt, Rodrigo Blankenship from Georgia made it. I uh, thought that was interesting. Um, also, Clay Matthews of USC um, and Dallas Clark of Iowa. Uh, also, Cody Schrader of Missouri uh, and uh, – uh, so just just an interesting list for uh, a little bit of discussion. But it uh, now look uh, the odds of a walk home making it are uh, I know they're less than say your five star. But it is nice to see a list like this every now and then just to know uh, that uh, even though you're a walk home, you can still make it in college football. Yeah, and then the the top two on the list, obviously. Uh, had tremendous careers. Stetson winning two national titles. Uh, I saw where he is rejoining the Rams. Uh, 
I guess this week. And then obviously Baker winning a Heisman Trophy uh, is a heck of a player and just signed a huge deal with the Buccaneers. So, uh, yeah, those are great stories, no question about it. Some returning starters in college football for next year. There's some teams that have quite a few coming back. Yeah, they do. Iowa State has uh, 20, Stanford 19, Virginia Tech 18, Boston College 17, uh, as is Oklahoma State. Some of the teams of the least, Washington has four. That's not surprising after losing their coach and multiple players. Mississippi State with five with their new coach. Michigan seven, Alabama eight. So, but again, with this transfer situation, uh, you can lose a lot of uh, players, but you can bring, uh, frankly, a lot of quasi-starters in pretty quickly. Yeah, you can. And I, I've always been one who didn't really get into the returning starters unless you were a good football team. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're a losing football team, you have a bunch of returning starters. What makes you think they're going to be any better the next <laughs> year? True. True. So, yeah. Um, that – that you just got to see what how they performed and what kind of team you actually have uh, coming back. Um, you know, the SEC televised a few years ago. They televised a bunch of the uh, spring games. I think only Georgia's. I'm not sure who's going to be on the SEC network, but Fox is going to carry both Ohio State and Michigan's prime, uh, nationally, right? Yeah, that's a good move by Fox. Uh, and what to elaborate on what Shane's saying. Uh, ESPN is carrying the the Alabama spring game live, uh, and that's the only spring game on ESPN the entire spring. The rest of them are on this uh, either SEC or ESPN Plus. So um, Fox, to its credit, uh, is going to carry the Ohio State and Michigan spring games. Also, Ohio State's April the 13th, and Michigan is April the 20th. Um, so we'll at least be able to see a little bit of spring ball. Um, that, um, And by the way, Michigan lost Rod Moore, their safety with a torn ACL in practice this week. So that's a blow for them. But again, getting back to this, the, um, the, the Shane, as you know, the issue here is uh, the networks on these spring games, they're trying to push people uh, to this uh, to spend a little bit more money with them and get these uh, ESPN Plus. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rhode Island Gator on YouTube brought to you by Quad Plum and asks, wasn't Kerwin a walk on? Yeah, Kerwin was. Uh, Richard Harvey says, Sully has to get his young pitchers work. The meaningless midweek games are the best games for that work. Yep, that's what they're there for. Again, regardless of – I know Sully very well. He wants to win, True. but I can promise you he will take losses every week if he can win every series That's right. uh, in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, Brent, the – okay, fill me in here. I, I've been ha trying to follow this. The NCAA, are they trying to increase the amount of coaches on your staff now where there's not a limit? Well, they're almost getting that way. Now, this, this just came out yesterday, and, and I, I'll – I'll read this almost verbatim so so people can hear it. Um, th there's new legislation uh, proposed. This is proposed. It hadn't come in yet. Uh, that, that <clears throat> this is from the oversight committee, uh, support staff, analysts, so forth, will be permitted to coach players both in practice and games, and that's this is different. It opens the door, uh, this is from Ross Dellinger, uh, for unlimited coaching staffs. Um, the reason the D1 Council rejected it last spring, their proposal maintains the limit of off-campus recruiters to 11. Uh, that would be the head coach and 10 assistants. However, a head coach could have flexibility to designate any 11 staffers is his countable recruiters. That will be a significant change, and it certainly would. Uh, so we'll see if this gets passed. Uh, that's kind of interesting. But, you know, the, kind of the point is, if you've got someone as an analyst 
who is a really good recruiter, if I read this right, you could probably include them in, in your recruiting staff. Yeah, we got, I mean, it just, <laughs> we got to wait. There's way too many coaches as there is, not just mm -hmm. here in Florida, but all around the country. Sure. Um, some sad news coming out of Birmingham about Birmingham Southern College. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Um, and they will, the, the college is going to close May 31st. Um, they don't have enough funding. So, boy, they, Birmingham Southern has been there almost, I think, 200 years. Um, so that's a, that's a sad thing to read, frankly. In Birmingham Southern, I don't know if you played against anybody from uh, mm -hmm. Birmingham Southern at some time in your career, but, uh, I mean, they've had some pretty good athletes coming out of there. So wanted to throw that in there. I just thought that was a uh, uh, a sad note. I hate to see it happen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mark asked on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, is the hip drop tackle rule, is that just for the NFL or has college adopted it? Um I'm pretty sure it's the NFL. I've not heard. You know, NFL right. changed the kickoff rule yes. and his hip drop tackle, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but that has not moved into the college game yet. Correct. It has not. Um, and then John says, the only thing that concerns him on these midweek games are the bats. Totally shut down after the first inning, too. I agree. But, again, if you watch baseball, not just the Gators, but if you watch baseball, not every team is great at the plate every game. It just happens. And I know people are very upset that we've lost two times to Florida State. I get it, people. But you need to be concerned about what happens this weekend against Mississippi State. That's that right. is a That's thousand right. times more important. Yes. So I, I just don't understand um, why people get so worked up over it. I understand you want to win and you want to – you want to score 12 runs every game. You want to hit five home runs every game. It does not happen in baseball for any team. All right, um, <clears throat> Robert wants to know, who would you consider the top five Gator walk-ons? Chris Doring's got to be in the top five. Yeah, Chris, probably. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go through that whole. Uh, Lewis Oliver, I mean, that's for, that's for another show. Um, before we jump into around the league, uh, Andy just shot a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Metal Law. Why is J.J. McCarthy's draft stock risen so much now comparing him to Drake May? Andy, I'll be honest. I have no idea. I don't see it. Uh, and maybe, he, maybe he is jumping high and bench pressing a lot. And I saw a thing the other day, and I didn't realize they did this at the Combine. Somehow it popped up on my Twitter or somewhere. They had the, the quarterbacks that threw at the Combine standing literally about 10 yards, maybe it was closer, to this, this wall that they had mounted uh, like a hand shield on it or just a, it a padded, padded wall, having these guys throw as hard as they possibly can, and they were clocking how hard they were throwing. <laughs> there was the – and, and I even – I don't tweet a lot, but I responded to this. I go, that is the dumbest thing that I've ever seen yeah. because really? nobody cares how hard a quarterback throws the football. No. It's just like nobody cares how far a guy can throw a football. It's uh, it's just ridiculous. Um, all right. We got a text here. We'll get to the text here in just a second. Brent, uh, Alabama, uh, they're in the spring. They've had some injuries. Well, their biggest injury was Jalen Hale, who's a sophomore receiver. Um, he had a severe leg injury. Uh, so he's going to be out for a while. Now, Hill d does not have great stats, but um, in talking to Alabama beat writers, they would tell you that he is a very promising receiver, so it's always tough to see that. But he's going to be on the shelf for a while. But they're deep at receiver, so they'll be okay. Um, and also... Uh, Jalen Milrow has basically been the number one quarterback during the spring, trying to figure out who the backup's going to be. Last year it was Ty Simpson. This year they've got Austin Mack from Washington, who is a legitimate 6'6". And they've also got Dylan Lonigan, uh, who is, they also really like. He is a baseball pitcher. He's not playing baseball, but he has done that. Um, in the past, one of the more amusing things has come out 
for Alabama, and I'll be brief about this, is obviously Nick Saban being retired. And we hear about Saban being really focused. Um, but uh, Jeff Allen, who's the director of sports medicine and have been on the staff for decades, uh, just made a suggestion that they get lunch at a place called Rama Jammers, <laughs> which is which is basically uh, uh, virtually connected to the st- to the stadium. Uh, and Saban said, uh, "Yeah, what is that place? How long has it been there?" <laughs> so <laughs> you know, this is a guy. Um, and, and look, Saban's not alone. These guys. Your 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 upper echelon Division One coaches. I'm not saying they're helpless, but the fact is, a lot of people do things for them. They bring you know they cater everything in, uh, so they eat there uh, at the office. And Terry Saban, Nick's wife, uh, also had a had a pretty amusing comment. She's trying to get him used to uh, technology now. She said he's actually texting and reading his own emails and sent, you could get this, Shane, and sent his first ever email. He even took his first trip to the pharmacy to pick up his first prescription, and he's actually quite proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. That's funny. People, people will be surprised, but these coaches, they're on lockdown most of their life. They are. And they, don't, they don't do any of that stuff. They don't go to the grocery no. store or anything. No. Silverback Concrete builds firm foundations for generations. You stand on it. We stand by it. We got Brent Beard, our college football analyst, on the Titan Number Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Tune. Brent, before we move on from Alabama, there is a text on the Titan Number text line from Frank in Fairhope, Alabama. He says, Brent, I believe Alabama had two college head coaches leave their programs to become an assistant at Alabama. Does that surprise you? Um, a little bit. One of them is there. The coordinator, um, uh, Womack, uh, who they really like. I think we're seeing a little bit uh, uh, more of that now to where coaches are uh, leaving head jobs. And look, you're, they're not leaving. Um, uh, a lot of these aren't, um, you know, again, your upper echelon of, co- of, uh, of schools necessarily, but they are making that move. Uh, I think probably some of them to get away uh, from the NIL and the portal um, as a head coach to go and be uh, another coach on another staff, maybe partly because they can learn stuff. Some of it, I think, is because um, they've got a chance to go to the playoffs with this new team. So, yes, um, uh, Shane and I have talked about this a little bit before that. Uh, it, it I, I don't know if it's a trend necessarily, uh, but there's uh, there's enough of it that's happened uh, as of late to be able to say that, yes, it is going on. Yeah, a text from Josh in Mississippi says, Brent, who are some of the potential big-name players from the SEC who may hit the transfer portal after spring ball? I don't know if you'll see any big-name guys leave their program um, after spring. Well, and, and, and that's a good question. Let me also add this to it, and we need to remember this. The portal opens April the 16th, um, and it's going to be open for two weeks. Um, and, again, that will basically be right after a lot of the spring games. Now, the thing to remember here is in the SEC, you cannot transfer from one SEC school to the other. So what we saw a lot in the winter is not going to happen in the spring Shane, I really wonder at some point if the SEC rethinks that and they open it back up to where they can transfer uh, within the conference uh, at this point. It's a good question. It's something to to look at, but we really won't know that until they complete spring and have the spring game. No. Anything going on in Auburn? Uh, J.D. Rhyme, a defensive back, is no longer on the roster. Um, he's got uh, uh, two years of eligibility remaining. They, Peyton Thorne is looking better from according to the beat writers. Um, Jarquez West Hunter, it, and they've got a good running back room. The receivers are better. The line of scrimmage is better. Brian Horson and Gus Malzahn, frankly, did a very 
average to poor job in recruiting linemen. So uh, Hugh Freeze literally is rebuilding that roster. Um, I was just reading some of these people talking about Khalil Jackson. I, I don't know if he'll be a top 10 all-time walk-on. Uh, he'd have to score like 10 to, 10 to 15 touchdowns this year. I'm not sure <laughs> if he scored more than two. Uh, yeah. Good kid, a good story, but I wouldn't put him in the top 10 of Gator walk-ons for sure. Uh, what's going on with the Hogs? Well, uh, I think one of the big things is Bobby Petrino is back. They're, they're working on their screen game uh, a little bit. Uh, Petrino loves that, so that will be interesting. Um, they're trying to get tougher, uh, which is kind of the theme of the spring. Um, so I think they're probably doing a little bit more hitting than normal. Their linebackers, gosh, they, they had a lot of their linebackers transfer. I won't go into all the names, but they did pick up Xavier Zori of Georgia in the portal. They've got three high school prospects that, that, that they are looking at. But this, this is a really important year, obviously, for Sam Pittman in Arkansas, and I think Petrino will help them. Yeah. Uh, Mike had a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Mellon Law. What position group do we, meaning the Gators, need to focus on in the portal? Uh, I don't know if they really look at a position group. I think uh, most teams nowadays look at, you know, like in the NFL, draft best available or anybody yeah. that can help your team. It doesn't matter if it's a stud running back and you have studs. Uh, right. You bring in – if he wants to come, you bring him. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the Gators, what can you tell us about going, what's going on in Gainesville? Um well, Miles Graham, the linebacker, will miss the rest of the spring, unfortunately. Um, he had a, uh, some, a back procedure, so hopefully he'll be back as soon as possible. Cam Waits, offensive tackle, uh, calf strain, so he likely won't be back. Um, I'm sure you talked about the comments from Princely U as they call him at Ole Miss. He's made the transfer at Ole Miss about not being developed. There have been just as many comments from people about princely you not going all out, out on every play, too. So I'll just kind of leave that there. But Yeah, I, uh, let me let – me, let me, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, and I had a text that came in this morning from George said, want to know my thoughts on Princely's comments. Look, I said this. Princely's athletic. He's a good player. He's not a great superstar. Yeah. Could he be? Possibly. But the eye, I say all this time, Brent, people laughing, but this is an NFL saying, the eye in the sky does not lie. That's right. That's the, talking about the film. If you watch yeah. him play, he does not play hard. That has nothing no. to do with coaching. Correct. E effort and attitude has nothing to do with coaching. So I, I wish him well. hope he has a great year in Oxford. But it's not that big of a loss if he's going to play the way he continued to play because his yep. effort was poor as hell majority yep. of the time. I'll leave it at yep. that. Yeah, there are a lot of clips that show that, unfortunately. The uh, the tight ends are working on blocking. Um, Justice Boone, is in de the defensive line, is making uh, improvement and getting back on the field so far. Uh, coaching staff said the secondary uh, stood out to them, so that's nice to hear. Uh, with that too, so and they and they're looking at some of the transfers. Grayson Howard is from Jacksonville. He was at South Carolina. I think they're they're really excited about him. He's a tackling machine. He was here in Jacksonville in high school. Um, so I think that he's going to be a real help. Would be interesting if Jameer Grimsley from Alabama is going to be the same way uh, with that. So uh, they look they. They've got some good transfers. Hopefully, they'll pan out. Yeah, and and the on the other side of the Princely deal is, from a coaching standpoint, it bothers me that we kept him in the game when he took plays off and to give great effort. Mm -hmm. However, today's world has changed because I think if you're paying these players X amount of dollars, you really can't take them out of the game. If that makes yeah. any sense, it does. So it's uh. It's it's a tough situation, but look, the eye in the sky don't lie. Uh, all right, the Georgia Bulldogs. 
Trevor Etienne, we all know, got himself in some trouble. Well, this will be handled, quote, unquote, internally. People hear this. Look, they've got a real problem at Georgia uh, with players and cars uh, and driving while you're under the influence of something. And in fairness to them, I know they're trying to get this under control, and they've got to be able to do it. They've had, unfortunately, uh, loss of life and uh, everything else that that can happen with the dangers um, of um, being impaired behind a vehicle. Uh, So, and again, uh, there'll be a lot of question about will he be suspended I mean, he may be suspended for the spring game. He may be suspended for another game during the season. They begin the year with Clemson in Atlanta. So I doubt he's experienced. He's going to be suspended for that. Look, ETN may be their best running back. So, and, and again, Georgia doesn't get everybody. Justice Terry, who is a five-star defensive lineman, committed to them. Then he changed his mind, and he's going to Southern Cal, who's, by the way, is doing better in recruiting. Um, one of my uh, good friends, Travis Ryer, uh, who works for we, we do a podcast together. Uh, his daughter, Savannah, is the, is the social media director for Southern Cal Recruiting, just took that job. So they're doing a lot, particularly, and they've got to do something on defense at Southern Cal. They were abysmal last year, but the point is Georgia doesn't get everybody. They did get Jared Curtis, who's a really good quarterback recruit out of Nashville Christian in Tennessee. So uh, just a little bit about the dogs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Toby asked on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Laws. Why Langford, the first SEC player to get called up to the majors after being drafted? This past June, uh, I don't know the answer to that, Toby. But congratulations to Wyatt. He will. I think he will be the yep. DH today for the World Champ uh, Texas Rangers. And it is extremely hard. Let's just put it this way: extremely hard when you are drafted and in the same year go be on a major league roster. It's almost unheard of. So uh, good for him, and uh, I think he has a bright, bright career. Does everything the right way. Uh, Brent, what's going on up in LSU? Yeah, I'll mention that. By the way, uh, there's a there's a neat video of the uh, manager telling him that um, uh, that he is going to be on the uh, uh, the Rangers team. So people might want to Google that. Um, Geo Paz from Wisconsin. He's defensive end. Is transferred to LSU. So we'll see how he does there. Uh, uh, a big emphasis on the defense uh, that, frankly, was abysmal last year at LSU. Uh, a lot of different coaches there, uh, so that's going to help. They like the offense of Garrett Nesmeyer. Shane's talked about him a little bit. Uh, so uh, I think they like their DBs and their safeties. The defensive line, I think, is going to be good. They've always got wide receivers, Karen Lacey. Uh, is really stepping up. He looks he looks very good. But this is going to be an LSU team. And by the way, speaking of Southern Cal, they play Southern Cal early uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, Shane and I need to be covering that game. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, you're going to see a real emphasis on defense for the Tigers this year. Yeah, speaking of USC, uh, we mentioned this Tuesday. Christopher says on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumber, USC picked up. Uh, Hilton Stubbs from Jacksonville. I think he's from Manor and a four-star safety. Um, again, he's got over a year. I think that I think he will end up decommitting. Uh, I just don't see a kid from Jacksonville going to Southern Cal. A lot, lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Sure. Uh, what's going on with the Rebels up in Oxford? Well, they believe that their defensive line is going to be very good, and I, I, I don't deny that. Walter Nolan is there, <laughs> and we talked about Prince Lee Yu. Obviously, he is there, so hopefully they will that that will work out for him. Um, they've got Jared Ivey, J.J. Pegues, who was at Auburn. If that name is familiar, uh, Jeffrey Rush uh, also were guys – 
uh, and some others who were coming in later. Uh, so, it, uh, look, we know what Lane can do offensively. Gosh, if they've got – and Pete Golding from Alabama will be in his second year as a D coordinator. Uh, imagine, Shane, if they get a really strong defense, what that will be. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in Ole Miss. You know, a lot of people are expecting to have a good year. Um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm anxious to see how it goes early on for them. Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee is a unique team to me. I've been down on Tennessee, but I think they're going to be better now with uh, Lama Leva at quarterback. Yeah, I think he's a yeah. hundred times better than Joe Milton. I yeah. Still to this day, cannot figure out why uh, they play Joe Milton over this kid. Well, uh, Nico, as they call him, is, is a really good quarterback. He played well in the bowl game against Iowa, and Iowa has a good defense. They have a terrible offense. Um, their Tennessee D coordinator, Tim Banks, made the statement earlier that um, uh, that they should have the best defensive line in the country. I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure about that one, but uh, uh, that they're getting better defensively. James Pierce Jr. Uh, is uh, really good. Um, Omari Thomas, Elijah Simmons, Bryson Eason, just to name a few of the guys uh, uh, on Tennessee. So uh, we'll be watching the uh, uh, the balls very closely, but uh, they're hoping to have a better year than they did last year. All right, before we get you out of here, Brent, give us tell us what's going on in Coral Gables and Tallahassee. Yep, be glad to the. Um, uh, the latest in Florida State is more legal stuff, uh, and I'll be brief about that. Um, Florida State, uh, their attorneys on Wednesday, which is yesterday, filed some papers um, saying the ACC misrepresented them on some issues. Now, what was interesting here was um, I won't go into the legalese of it, but uh, in the papers, the phrase after FSU exits the ACC was mentioned several times, and that's the first time that had happened in anything filed by Florida State. So uh, that, that was interesting. On the field, uh, offensive lineman Rob Scott, Joshua Farmer, they're out for the uh, the spring. They love their running back room. Josiah Holmes, Lawrence Toafilla, Rodell Williams comes over from Alabama. Uh, DJ Uyunglele uh, has 40 starts. He's a starter. Brock Glenn is the backup. They also love Daryl Jackson, 6'5", 330 on the defensive line. Uh, at Miami, Xavier Restapro looks really good. And wide receiver, they're going to be targeting him. They love Cam Ward at quarterback. Uh, has a quick release. Um, he's got uh, a bunch of starts behind him. That that's going to be a big difference defensively. That they're good. Reuben Bain on the defensive line. Jason Taylor, their defensive line coach, uh, really loves Bain. So uh, so far so good. Uh, at Miami and for FSU for uh, spring, and we'll certainly keep folks updated uh, about FSU getting out of the uh, the ACC and the teams that are going to follow them when they leave. Good stuff as always, Brent. Have a great Easter, my man. We'll talk to you next week. Happy Easter and all. Thank you, Shane. Enjoyed it, brother. Yep, that's Brent Barrett, a college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter. Join us on the Titan Tomorrow Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Tip. Take a quick time out. Come back. Do a little Baker Sporting Goods High School Roundup with our man, Mike Radow. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Be right back. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melvin Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. 
Dave and Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, Watch. Radwear, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radwear, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Ruse Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. We're going to head back to the Titan More Hotline courtesy of Comfort Temp, and it's our man from the Main Street Daily News and PrepZone.com. Mike right out. Good morning, Mike. How you doing? Very good, Shane. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, let's let's start first. Uh, we haven't really talked to you since ba- high school basketball ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and actually the two teams in the Gainesville area uh, are the only two teams in the outlining area. You know, even going as far north as Jacksonville, south to Ocala, um, but Hawthorne and Hawthorne girls and Williston boys were the only two area teams to bring home state championships. And the thing that made it even uh, more impressive is the fact that they won back to back. So, mm-hmm. you know, Hawthorne uh, had to cut, overcome double digit deficits in the state semifinals and the state championship. You know, Cornelius Singer wins his second straight state title uh, with girls basketball. How about a four and O record chain? in his last four state championship games because he's got the two football state championships back to back as well but his girls basketball team won and obviously when you win the honors come too. Cornelius Ingram was the named the 1A Florida Dairy Farmers 1A coach of the year and his junior guard Demaya Adams was named the 1A player of the year um, you know big year for Demaya uh, she averaged 16 points um 1.7 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 4.6 steals. And she kind of filled up the stat sheet. Uh, I think she had over 16 points or right around 16 points in both the semifinals and the championship game. You know, big year for her. Also for Jalea Jackson, um, which I think, you know, I think she was a big uh, part of that that championship run as well. And then for the Williston boys, they also won their second consecutive state championship. Hillier gave them a tough game in the, in the championship game. But, you know, Williston just had so many weapons. They had five players that averaged in double figures. And it comes as no surprise that um, uh, their coach, Jim Irvin, has been named the 1A coach of the year. However, uh, C.J. Ingram, the son of, of Cornelius Ingram, has been named the 1A player of the year. So he repeats as player of the year. And Tyler mm-hmm. Lamb, who has just recently signed with the University of Tampa for Williston, he was uh, second in the voting for 1A Player of the Year. Also, Elvin Shepard of uh, Fort White finished third in the voting for 1A Player or 1A Coach of the Year. They actually lost to Hawthorne in districts, but then they beat them when it counted the most. 
They beat them in the first round of the 1A state playoffs. So, yeah, overall, really good year, uh, especially for this area, to bring home two state championships, also knowing that they were back-to-back state titles as well. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. We got a text on the Titan Moore text line from wherever the area coach 630 is. Uh, says, Mike, any early signs to where C.J. Ingram might be going to college, assuming he'll be playing D1 basketball? I'm pretty sure he will be a basketball kid in college. I mean, you would think, but, you know, he's got some pretty good offers for football, too. And I don't know if he's wanting to focus on one sport. Uh, You know, he's really good at basketball. Um, You know, he averaged this year a little bit better than last year. He had 24 points per game average, eight and a half rebounds, 3.7 assists, 3.7 steals, and 1.9 blocks. And he still has another year of eligibility in high school. So uh, it will be interesting to see, you know, does he – Does he find a school where he can play both like his dad at Florida uh, or does he want to focus on one sport because he's, he's good in both. I think his future, his best future is uh, in basketball. Um, But I could see him moving to another position in football and excelling too. I mean, he's just a great athlete. You know, he could Mm -hmm. probably do, you know, do whatever he wants. Yeah. Uh, I just remember speaking to, the CI before the football season started this year. He's like, he's, he's a, he's a basketball kid in college. So, but as you said, that mm-hmm. could change, uh, live a healthier yeah. lifestyle with our bowl, flavorful smoothies and our amazing food, tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. we got our man, Mike, right out talking a little high school sports here. Uh, Mike, let's, let's start with softball. Uh, both softball and baseball got about a month left in their season. Uh, tell us some of the, the teams that are having pretty good years so far in softball. Well, I think you have to start with Gainesville High School. Um, you know, they struggled last year, and they've already won twice as many games this year as they won all of last year. You go back to, to last year, and, you know, pitching, I think, uh, was a big reason why they why they struggled. They only won six games last year, Shane, and they're already off to an 11-1 start, and they were 11-0 until a couple of days ago when they played rival Buholtz. Now, they're – Freshman uh, Phnom pitcher, Leanna Bordage, for whatever reason, didn't pitch in that game, didn't play in that game. And Buell's actually upset them, and not only upset them, but mercy ruled them. Um, I had to take a double take when I, when I saw the final score. So, you know, big shout out to Buell's High School for the 16-5 to win, the only loss of the season for GHS. Uh, that snapped a 10-game uh, excuse me, a 10-year losing streak in the series. It snapped a 19-game losing streak to their rival. So a big win for Buholtz. Uh, Gainesville was supposed to play Santa Fe last Friday. We were going to broadcast the game, but it got uh, rained out. It got moved to yesterday, but we had rain again yesterday. So I don't know if GHS and Santa Fe are going to play, but Santa Fe is another one of those teams, uh, you know, they kind of keep your eye on in the in Alachua County. They're off to a 9-2 and two start, so they're they're playing pretty well. And then if you look at the smaller schools, you know, Brantford made a run all the way to the state championship, one state championship game last year. They've got everybody back this year and they lost twice to Fort White. But here's the thing. Fort White has kind of been their nemesis last year in the one district six championship. Fort White shut out Brantford seven to nothing in the first round of the playoffs. Brantford shut out Fort White three to nothing and then Brantford goes on and, and they make a run all the way to the state championship game they lost to Liberty County seven to four in the title game uh, but this Fort White team Shane has played Brantford twice this year and they've beaten them twice this year mm. so they just have their number for whatever reason so I think Fort White is a team that that should be considered in the mix Brantford without question they're 13 and three I think they've got the, the talent again as I said everybody's back for them I think they could make another run all the way to the state championship game. And then you throw in a a team like Trenton, which was a little bit down last year. Uh, But even though they were down young, I say down, they were young last year. Even though they were down or young last year, they still won 16 games. And I think Trenton is a team to to watch as well. Uh, We did get a chance to see Trenton and Gainesville, and Trenton lost that one. And and a pitcher is still two to nothing. But Trenton softball right now is off to a 10 and one start. So that's their only loss of the year to GHS. So I think those are the top softball teams in our area uh, to keep your eye on. Yeah, I was I was with you. 
uh, like you, when I saw that score of the Buholtz GHS softball game, I was like, <laughs> yeah. what? But I didn't realize I didn't I realize said, they didn't throw my, throw her the ace for GHS. I'm curious why. Yeah, but... she, yeah, I don't know why. I haven't had a chance to talk to Coach Chronister yet. Uh, but I thought, you know, Max Preps gets stuff wrong, so I thought they had it reversed. Uh, but then I got a text not long after that from Buholtz's coach. You know, he was pretty excited about the win, as he should be. You know, it's a big win. Yeah, for sure. All right, baseball. Uh, I usually view Holtz as the baseball school in this area. Who else uh, you got? And tell us a little bit about the Bobcats. Let's start with Buholtz first because, you know, they were one game away from their first ever Final Four appearance last year. And they've got a lot of key players back this year, uh, several guys that have either signed with Division One schools uh, or committed to – um, they've got a big test tonight, Shane, against Trinity Christian out of Jacksonville. I saw Trinity Christian play uh, earlier this year against Santa Fe. Uh, it's a it's a team that's nationally ranked. Trinity Christian has uh, a couple of guys that are going to Florida. Ethan Wheeler, uh, Aiden Arnett uh, will be headed to the Gators. Um, they've got um, Brady Harris, also a, another Florida product. Um, Braden Harris, who is going to FSU. Uh, they got a guy from Virginia, a guy from Maryland. So you get the point. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really good team. Uh, and the game that I saw, they, they beat Santa Fe 10 to nothing. Um, but again, that's not a really good test. But they, they their only loss came to a, a non-Florida team so far this year. But getting back to Buholtz, um, you know, they've got obviously Noah Hayes, the catcher, who's going to UCF. They've got, um, you know, Anthony Wilkie, who's going to Clemson. Uh, they've got a, a lot of guys back from that team. The game that I saw, Bishop Kenny uh, in Jacksonville, you know, which is another good Jacksonville club, it was a one nothing game. J.J. Gardner got the start on the bound. He's a J.U. commit. He's a junior. Uh, so another Division One guy for Buholtz. Uh, and then Aiden Cat- Caston smith not only hit the um, solo home run in that game, the only run of the game, but he also came in relief and, and locked it down. So, they, they're talented, Buholtz. So this is a good game tonight, Buholtz and, and Trinity Christian. Six o'clock game. We'll have live audio coverage beginning at 550 at MainStreetDailyNews.com. But, yeah, no question, Buholtz is uh, – I would consider them the, the top team in the area uh, just because they've got so many guys back. They're off to a great start right now. Um, but outside of that, Shane, I'm not, I'm not too sure that, um, you know, there's too many teams to pick from other than maybe like an Oak Hall which was in the playoffs last year in 2A. Uh, P.K. Young won 19 games last year and just missed the postseason. I think they've got a, a chance to get in the playoffs. But as far as like a deep run, I think Buholtz is, is the best chance in this area in baseball. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. So uh, should be a good time here, about a month to go till they hit the playoffs. Uh, spring football mm-hmm. in the state of Florida, I want to say – the end of April, first part of May is when they crank up. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Um, it sounds about right. Uh, it's usually like that last week, I think, of April, um, and then you roll for a few weeks before you get your spring game. Um, I don't know who the new coach will be, Shane, but Santa Fe this afternoon is naming their new head football coach. Uh, obviously, you had a weird situation at Ed Newberry High School with with Ed Johnson, but he's back now as the head coach. Uh, but there's some other things going on that I uh, can't really speak to right now uh, that, uh, you know, hopefully in the next week or so um, we'll be able to release at Main Street Daily News about some other coaching stuff that's going on in the area. Some some wild and crazy stuff really going on um, away from, um, you know, with, with not only Ed Johnson at Newberry, but then Santa Fe uh, placing their baseball coach on administrative leave and, and the situation they've got going on over there. Uh, crimes against children i i have no idea what's going on but uh i'm hoping that it will all shake out here in the next month or so yeah uh how, how is trinity catholic this year in baseball um you know i think they're they're always going to be in the mix and i know they just had a walk-off win against north marion um so I think that uh, it's a team that you can, you know, and North Marion is a team that is down. They they went and, and won a state championship last year, uh, beat Bishop Kenny, in fact, in the state championship game, but they're down this year. But Trinity Catholic, I think you always have to kind of consider them in the mix or overall record. 
seven and six, but look at football. I mean, football team played a tough schedule and still got to the state championship with a losing record. And you look at Trinity Catholic, you know, they played, uh, you know, Berkeley Prep, they played uh, Bishop Snyder, they played two games against Venice. So they played tough competition, uh, but they did beat that, beat North Marion three to two in eight, in eight innings, which was a, a big win for them. I would think they'll be in the playoffs. But again, they got another tough one coming up. They go to Providence in Jacksonville next Tuesday. Uh, so I, I think Trinity Catholic will get into the postseason. They were a district champion last year. So I think they'll be a team to watch in Ocala for sure. Yeah. Think, speaking of Ocala, I, I do think I read where North Marion has a new football coach. Uh, so there's a lot mm-hmm. of coaching changes going on right now. Yeah. And it was kind of a strange situation. I haven't been able to uh, gather the exact facts on this. But from what I heard, uh, the previous coach, something about his teaching uh, certificate or something expired and mm-hmm. he didn't get it renewed in time. And mm-hmm. that might have been a good out for them to, to get rid of him because they've struggled the last couple of years. But again, I, I, I don't know if that's 100 percent factual. It's just what I heard. Yeah. Mike, good stuff as always. Let everybody know how they can uh, read your work. All right. I appreciate it, Shane. The best way is to go to MainStreetDailyNews.com. We've got stuff up there all the time. Uh, you'll have a re- we'll have a recap tonight. Marty, Marty Palmer will call the game and, and have a recap of that Buholt Trinity Christian game tonight. But, uh, you know, we also – I'm going to write a story about track and field. Uh, we're going to release our uh, soccer all-area teams next week. The week after that, we'll release our all-area girls and boys basketball teams. Uh, last night we had the, the – Williston boys basketball team on our weekly show uh, at Sonic Drive-In, and uh, that'll be archived at Main Street Daily News. Next week, we'll have the two-time defending state champion Hawthorne girls basketball team on our show next week. So uh, lots of stuff going on, obviously baseball, softball, uh, you know, pretty busy time at Main Street. Yeah, good stuff as always. Appreciate your time, Mike. All right, same here, Shane. Thanks. Have a great day. That's Mike right out. Join us on the Titan or Hotline. Courtesy of Comfort Tent. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. Uh, This Day in Sports, which is brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union, puts some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. This day, back in 2005 at the TPC Sawgrass, the Players' Championship, 48-year-old Fred Funk becomes the oldest winner. He beat uh, Luke Donald, Tom Lehman, and Scott Verplank, or one stroke behind. So that's This Day in Sports brought to you by our good friends at Campus USA Credit Union. Uh, tonight, enjoy the Sweet 16 kicks off. you got four games. If you can stay up late enough and watch them. Uh, Andy says the men's Gator swimming tied for first with Cal after day one. 200-yard medley relay. Team shatters the American. I did see that. Yeah, our, our swim team is outstanding. Uh, coached by Anthony Nesty, he does both girls and boys. And uh, like I said, swimming and gymnastics seem like they go year round. But uh, good luck to them the rest of the year. Uh, make sure you um, tune in tomorrow. Should have a good show. Hope you had a great day, folks. Take care. <laughs>